since the Younger game. I just saw him bold as brass. They get steady, Frank. Cole and Bob Younger, no mistake. Where are they? The bank. Four men right now. The Younger brother. Looks like we caught a real big fish. All right, boys, spread the word. Everyone knows what to do. Just tell them to hold it until I give the signal. All right, gentlemen, hold steady. Now, we can do this the easy way. Nobody has to die. But we can do it the hard way. Choice is yours. You, open the safe. I, uh, I, I, I don't know the combination. I shot Lightning Jack Hain. I got him, Clem. I seen him buck just as I fired. Mommy in the middle? I just shot Kane, the fastest gun alive. Well, maybe you hit him too, but mine was a head shot. Knocked him forward right out of the saddle. There ain't no maybes. My shot was plumb in the middle. It's right the out of the bloody brothers. saddle. Like we got the younger brothers. We got one, too. I got one. Set the camera up here. Come on, they're going to take get that dead body in the front. I want the committee right behind it and get the town hall in the back. This is history. That there is Sam Jorgensen. Where's the other one? Where's that lightning jack? Ha! Huh. We got Kane, Marshal. Me and Pat here, we, we fill them full of holes. Horse took to fright and dragged the body on down to the riverbed, I reckon. He ain't the fastest gun alive. Not anymore. <laughs> You better go fetch the body. Yes, sir. Uh, Marshal, Marshal Kurtz in the center. You've got to be in the center of the photograph. Can we have a statement, Marshal? Well, I'm not much for speeches. I leave that to the politicians. I am just a man who's doing the job that people elected me to do. I think today we sent out a message to all lawbreakers. In Junction City, you will respect the law, or you will learn to fear it. I, I guess these boys are just slow learners, eh? <laughs> Three cheers for Marshal Kurtz. Hip, hip! Hooray! Hip, hip! Hooray! Hip, hip! Hooray! All right. Hold it. that out to me. Yes, sir. But you don't need the gun, so it ain't the law. Right. Younger gang wiped out. That part. The only flaw in the trap was the escape of Lightning Jack Kane. Although several witnesses swore he was shot full of holes and riding dead in the saddle. 
Kane is of medium height and build, blonde hair with a mean weathered face and has an English accent. English? Yes, sir. I don't speak English. No? I'm a bloody Australian. <gasps> Can I send this to my mates back home and tell them what a big success I am here if it says I'm English? Bloody newspapers. Never get anything right, you know. That's right. Marshal Dan Kurtz was unconcerned, saying, dead or alive, Kane don't matter. It, we got Cole Younger. He was the leader and brains of the gang. Kane was a follower and just a brainless no account. Without the Younger brothers, he's nothing. He's nothing? Without the Younger brothers, I'm nothing? That's right. Brainless no account? That's what it said, does it? Let's see who's brainless. That's four bag of salt, two sacks of flour. You got that, boy? That's four bags of salt, two bags of flour. Well, that's on top of my regular order. This handwriting is so messed up, Mr. Kern. Maybe I can make it out. It says, thank you, sir. Is that everything? Well, that's what I thought it said, but it's bad written, real bad. Well, get him to load the rest of my order on the wagon out there, and you better do the tallying up yourself. Being he can't write proper, why, uh, we don't want him doing no figuring, do we? Huh? <laughs> Put the rest of those goods on Mr. Kern's wagon, and no more sass, you hear? Oh, pay him no heed, Mr. Doyle. It's a fine Christian thing you've done, taking on this poor, unfortunate boy. Well, it's been a real struggle, Mrs. Franks. See, the boy was poorly raised. His folks filled his head with all kind of fool thoughts that he was just as good as a normal man. Of course, when they died of the cholera, I knew it was my Christian duty to take him in, try to get his mind right. Bless you. Good day, Mr. Doyle. Good day to you. It's real hot out there today, oh, ma'am. Really Ben. Ben. Now, Josh Curran is one of my best customers. Now, I ain't gonna have you sassing him. That's it. No more notes and no more writing. You understand? Now, half the folks around here can't even read or write. And it irks them that somebody like you can. It's unnatural. Now, I took you on when nobody else would. I deserve some gratitude. Look, finish loading and tally up the cash draw and take it to the bank. Now, all steady, gentlemen. We can do this the easy way. No one has to die. Or we can do it the hard way. The choice is yours. Fill it up. Oh. Shut the door. Against the wall. Hands in the air. Get clear of that window. Fill it up. Any door in here? Yeah. Against the wall. Keep away from the window. What the hell's this? Storekeepers. They're closing up. What? Stores. They close at four. They do their banking from four to five. Maybe you ought to come back after five. You. You. Yeah, I've been safe. Oh. 
Sid, I open the safe. I can't, sir. I'm just a teller. Only the manager knows the combination. Where's the manager? Give me that. Still, everyone. Night. Come on. Trail them, Jed, but stay well back. I need a few good riflemen with fresh horses. And find me someone who can read cracks. For me to deliver it, David. I say jump, you jump. No questions, no back talk. Comprende? Now up. What are you? Part engine or something? No. Nah. Engine would have been smart enough to let me ride right into one. shut. I'm letting you go. You can talk now. <laughs> yeah, you can't talk. Turn around. Face that tree. Turn back. You're a dead man. Don't even think about it. <laughs> I join your gang. What gang? What are you going to do anyway? Walk into a bank and write them a note. <laughs> Dumbest thing I ever heard of. Take your boots off. Quick. I don't want you running back over there to tell the posse where we are. Just be glad that you're walking back to town. Instead of lying across the saddle. Adios. <laughs>
It don't make no sense. He's turned the horse loose and kept the boy. Maybe he's just running that poor dummy boy barefoot out of pure meanness. Stay alert, men, and shoot on sight. How did you get? <gasps> I'm snake bit. You can't be snake bit. That's an Navajo snake charm. Cost me fifty dollars. Yeah. Suck the poison. You're gonna have to suck the poison out. I can't reach it. Just a splinter? No bite. <laughs> See? Snake charm works. I don't scare the snakes, okay? I just don't like them. Nonetheless, he was willing to chore on my butt to save my hide. Is you've been saving my hide since we met. I ain't a man to take that lightly. Let's get. <sighs> Had to turn back by now. Posse will never cross the county line. We've got some talking to do. this once. How come you can't talk? Baby, you had a baby. You're the baby. Baby can't talk. You was born dumb, but not deaf. Not, not deaf. What's your name? What do people call you? Ben Doyle. Ben Doyle? Meet Lightning Jack Kane. That's uh, the 
Lightning Jack came. You, uh, you probably heard of me. Want to be an outlaw? Well, not everybody. You gonna help me rob a bank? Yeah. You could have used some backup last time, but uh. Ah, your ears, your eyes for me. What makes you think I need your eyes? It's what gave you that notion. Yeah, well, my eyes get a little fuzzy uh, up close, trying to read or squinting down a sight. But I can hit anything you can point at. And it'll be dead before your finger's straight. See that? That's an eagle eye. Got it off a Navajo medicine man. $75. That's my aim and eye. So don't start thinking. Just cause one part of me ain't working good that I got a weakness. Yeah. I guess you know better than me how folks react to weakness. Anyway, you still think I need help? I can tell a one dollar bill from a hundred dollar bill. But They're all bloody ones. I locked off a bank for 50 bucks. <laughs> what? I'll never tell anyone. Oh, you'll never tell anyone. Oh, of course. <laughs> hey, hey, while you're at it, don't go talking to no one about that snake bite either. Hey, don't go talking to no one. <laughs> hey, <laughs> oh, I just come out with them. Don't go talking and don't tell anyone. <laughs> hey, Ben, I'll probably make up a lot more funny jokes like that about you. But if you ride with me, nobody else will. You ever tried Arizona chicken? Ah. 
I mean, Australia's a colony, you see, so if you rob a bank back there, you want it all over the country. But in America, you can rob banks in five different states. You've still got another 30 across the border and you run free. No worries. Yeah, democracy is a wonderful thing. All right, gut pain. Well, pick your outhouse. Next time you eat buzzard, I need the drumsticks. Hey, you ain't got all day. Go anywhere. Bad smeller. What do you smell, old mate? Not you, him. His mate. That's his name. I was going to call him Thunder at one stage. You know, Lightning Jack and Thunder. He wouldn't hear of it. Uh huh. That's what he smelt. Nah, they're just plain folks. I never shoot plain folks. Unless they really annoy me. Mine's gone away. Smile. I don't need a gun. I'm going to charm these folks out of a ten dollar horse. Five dollars, maybe less. I got a silver tongue. Howdy, neighbours. Thirty dollars for this bag of bones. Thieving bastard. I should have shot him. someone goes for their gun, then you shoot them. Now, hold steady, gentlemen. Yeah. We can do this the easy way. No one has to die. Or we can do it the hard way. The choice is yours. Thank <laughs> you. 
Bank robbery bungled. In a display of criminal stupidity, one of the two would-be robbers managed to shoot himself before the tellers could even raise their hands. His partner panicked, and the two fled in fear as the bank staff laughed in their faces. One witness thought one of the men was Jack Kane. Jack Kane? What happened to Lightning Jack? What's... I sweat blood earning that handle, and some piss ant reporter just leaves it out. I'm writing him a letter. U.S. Marshal Daniel Kurtz dismissed this claim, saying every time there's a robbery, someone identifies Kane. But that colourful outlaw era is finished. Kane is just a loose end who will be cut off. He sure, he sure ain't no Jesse James. What do you mean, ain't no Jesse James? What's so special about Jesse James? Sure didn't impress me none. Yeah. I know Jesse James. Yeah. Rode on a few banks in a couple of years back with him and his brother Frank. Frank's the brains. Jesse is a peckerhead. Pecker. Down there, that's your pecker. Jesse's a peckerhead. Is he bald? <laughs> no, he's not bald. Just dumb. Dumb like I was to try and rob a bank or greenhorn like you. We gotta face the facts. I was born to be an outlaw. You wasn't. Go home, kid. Forget it. Just one good headline. Is that too much to ask? We want bullets. What do you want them for? Gonna rob a bank. By yourself. Why are you gonna join up with the James boys? They're gonna learn you to be an outlaw. So one day I'll pick up the newspaper and it'll say, Jesse James and Ben Doyle rob bank. Like they could teach you things that I couldn't. <laughs> I suppose they'll put that in the paper too, will they? Jesse James succeeds where Jack Kane failed. Just testing you. Come on. Those James boys couldn't even teach you to fart like an outlaw.
There'll be more of them. If they come down for a visit, just do like I do. Spend some friendly time with them, Arm Hatter. There'll be no trouble if we follow their rules. Just passing through. Show no fear, no disrespect. Most important. Oh, shit. No rules. The Comanche. Just mount up steady like. The other three will come from my side. Don't shoot. No matter what. Just follow me. Why didn't we shoot them? The Comanche. We don't know their names. You don't know nothing about Injuns, do you? You kill a Comanche and they don't know his name, the spirit goes into an owl. And every night that owl will come around calling out, who, who. If you can't sing out the right name, he'll follow you forever. Bad medicine. Yeah, I learned that secret from old Red Eagle himself. He was a Comanche. Sold me this charm. Keeps grizzly bears away. Only thirty dollars. 
we got a problem, Dan. Granville. That's ten days hard ride from where he was sighted two days ago. This is horseshit. No, it's called competition. That stuff we ran on Law and Order and the Younger Gang Wipeout got picked up nationwide. Heck, the mail made you a national hero, Dan. So, of course, our rivals are rooting for the underdog. They'll try and turn Kane into some kind of folk hero outlaw. And then you'll be just the lawman who failed to catch him. So far, it's just this one small paper. But it could catch on. Then we'll have to deflate Mr. Kane pronto. How? I can find the right people and the proper incentive. What I need is some financial support from the Law and Order Association. Well, I'm sure that can be arranged. Junction City and the mail are behind you 100%. Governor. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's no law in Wayside Flats. Got us a cabin a couple of miles up the road. Tomorrow, I'll start teaching you the outlaw trade. And now, something more important. Red Guard of Saloon. There's only one reason this town exists. Tell me, how long has it been since you let it down a woman? I don't know. You never? You never? Sweet smell on gal passes class by, does it? Stand up and say howdy. Good. You do know where to put it. See, you're just nervous, right? Hey, my first time, only time in my entire life I was ever scared shitless. Yeah, it was a, it was a nerve jangling experience for, for a boy of 11 years. It's a simple, it's riding a horse. Start with a walk. Now move into a canter. Steady like, don't trot, never trot. You hold that steady canter. Till that sweet little creature starts to moan. That's your signal. Yep. Yep, ride hard, come on, yes. <laughs> you boys got business here. Now remember, never just jump on a woman. First, tell her she's got a pretty dress, quite right soft hair. In your case, stroke it a few times. And jump on him. Oh, mate. Hey, Jack, boys. Howdy. They told me you were badly wounded, maybe even dead. Well, fact is, I did stop enough lead to kill a normal man. But you know me. I'm as tough and hard as a nickel steak. <laughs> you surely are. Oh, I want you to meet my new partner, Ben Dorton. Ben, this is the Miss Lana Castell. The prettiest gal in the county, the sweetest singing voice in the entire state. 
Pleased to meet you, Ben. Would you um, like a... Ben's a... Ben's a man of few words. But he was just saying to me on the way in that he'd really like it if you could organize. Pillar? Pillar here's a perfect match for Ben. He don't talk much, and she never stops. <laughs> now, Pillar, darling, I want you to take good care of our friend Ben here. He could surely use a nice hot bath. But aside from that, he's unsolved. Well, what a coincidence, so am I. What do you say you and me get acquainted over some bubbly champagne? Come on. Right. Now let you and me get on with my pleasure. I'm gonna do my specialty number now. Cowboy Jack. Just a lonely cowboy <laughs> with a heart so brave and he learned hey, how hey, to everybody sing like that with eyes of heaven's own blue. Your sweetheart waits for you, Jack. Your sweetheart waits for you. And all You ain't the quietest man I ever met. You ain't said more than two or three words in almost an hour. Mind you, I am not one to complain about such things. Most men will just interrupt a person or talk right on over the top of you. But not you, sweetie. You are a rare gentleman, Ben. Now, don't you want to say something sweet about me? Then go right on ahead, darling. You can't talk, can you? Is there any other part of you that doesn't work properly? <laughs> so you mean to say, no matter what different things we find ourselves getting up to, you couldn't tell nobody, could you ever? Isn't that a real shame? <laughs> New York. We'll go to New York City. I reckon people there got culture coming out of their ears. When, Jack? Oh, one last job. I need a couple of weeks to get Ben ready. I'm glad you got Ben to watch your back. You know, there's some things a woman can tell right off. He's loyal to you. Yeah. I'll be on account if I saved his life. He got bit in the leg by a rattler. If I hadn't been there to calm him down and suck out the poison, he was a goner. Of course, we never, we never mention it. <laughs> Men. Well, this time we really are going to go off and make a fresh start. I can feel it. Seems like only yesterday I promised to take you away. It's been nine years. <laughs> Honey. Beer, Luke. Some odd looking bright and perky this morning. Let me guess. Excited about starting your school today, right? right? Something else put that silly grin on your face? Howdy, Ben. What did you do last night? Oh, no. You mean you. Right up. I'd like to hear sorry from you, boy. Stupid grand just don't get it done. Don't look at him. Hmm. 
This is uh, none of my affair, gentlemen. Hey, Mick, you gotta watch this. That's Comanche Doyle. He don't look like no engine. Hey, they call him Comanche because after he guns a man down, he cuts out his tongue. Got a dozen of them on a string around his neck. Under his shirt. Likes to feel it next to his skin. Yeah, I heard about him. The Comanche Doyle. Comanche Doyle. Yep, dangerous fellow. About 50 bucks says you can drop them both. Without spilling his beer. Make it a hundred. <clears throat> now, just hold on there. No point in getting all head up over a little spilled beer. Heck, I spill more than that just taking a drink. <laughs> I guess I'm just clumsy. No offense, Mr. Doyle. Hey, fella. Appreciate you not making trouble in my town, Comanche. It's out of them boys. I surely hope your friend wasn't running for me. Nah, man. He'd more likely be running after a pretty little filly like you. You can be sure of that. Last night, he practically begged me to marry him. But I'm too young for that. Ah, uh, you gotta love him. Point in practice than that. Too slow. Got a better idea for you. Take that rig off. Rode with a fella once. Name of Bad Eyes McBain. Now he really needed eyeglasses. Couldn't see past his hand. So, try that on. Made huh? himself a special piece. Twenty gauge cut down. It's a close up gun. We'll get close. Take it easy. That knot in the wall. Forty-five caliber. Fifty caliber special. Lightning don't strike twice. Once is enough. Now, this shotgun, six or seven paces, blow a man clean out of his boots. But at thirty paces, It'll just make him real pissed off. Put it away. Now, no point pulling a gun on a man 
You look like a scared rabbit. You gotta look right through him, like he's nothing. Think like you are a rattlesnake, and he's just a little mouse. <clears throat> Me? Is that how I do it? No. I just, uh, I just know I'm good. Real good. That tale I was telling about you being Comanche Doyle ain't entirely made up. Of course, it ain't true about Comanche cutting out a man's tongue. Ben, I want you to have this. In fact, this ain't even an Injun charm. I got it off an old China man. That's a fertility charm. They ain't tongues. They're, um, testicles. You know, balls. From now on, they're tongues. Comanche. Ah, no need to thank me. Just get on with your gun practice. Let's fix us up a bit of grub. Heard talk you used to lay low around these parts. Figured he'd head here if he's all shot up. How shot up don't matter. The reward stands. Alive or dead. No, I can't recollect anyone like that. Hey, Lana, these two uh, lawmen are asking about an outlaw by the name of Lightning Jack Kane. You know him? Lawmen? <laughs> lawmen are always fat old grouchy types. If you two are lawmen, you can lock me up. No, ma'am. We are the law. When? Special U.S. Deputy Marshal. You know Kane? Oh, I met him once. <laughs> that was enough. He was no outlaw. Outlaws can be gentlemen. No, sir. Mr. Lightning Jack Kane was a mean, low-down, conniving skunk. I heard he's dead. I hope he is. <laughs> you boys look, uh, harsh. Sally, why don't you find these two handsome boys a table while I hustle up something? Well... should be on the stage, gal. I can swear you meant that. Yeah, well, that part about Jack being a low-down, mean, can I have a skunk? I meant it. Huh? Well, be careful. Them boys are toting badges. I guess that makes them legal. They got a smell of death on them. I know. I just want to know why the sudden interest in Jack. always slip up naked. Yeah, well, I do, but uh, wouldn't be decent in front of another man. But, uh, that what brought you here in the middle of the night started thinking about me buck naked? I came here to warn you. There's two deputy marshals in town telling folks there's a dead or alive reward on you. Dead or alive reward? How much reward? I think they said two hundred. Two hundred dollars? Well, maybe it was two thousand. What's the difference? It's dead or alive. What's the difference? Two hundred dollars is a fitting reward for a two-bit cattle rustler. Tell them. I'm Lightning Jack Kane. A bank robber and a cold-blooded killer. Yeah, silly me, I must have panicked. Maybe they said 5,000. 5,000? 
Yeah, sounds more like it. Saddle up, Ben. Folks around here determine their kinfolk for less than that. Might have to have some dollars, eh? <laughs> Jack, I'm scared. Ah, the law's been on my tail for years. No, this is different. These are bounty hunters. And there's more coming. Some marshal up north has been hiring killers. Special deputies. Dan Kurtz, Junction City. It's not safe for you here anymore, Jack. You can't come back. Uh, See, we can't. No, no matter. You... I ain't planning to come back. Not more than once. Take you with me, like I promised. <laughs> When? One last big job. I'll be back at the end of the month. You'll be ready to run. Got my word. Hi. I don't suppose you picked up one of them wanted posters with my name on it? No. This is just a small town. We need a big city bank, like Junction City. What, rob that bank again? <laughs> I can never go back there. The whole town is deputized. Lightning? Never. Lightning never strikes twice. You've got a point. It's the last place on earth anyone would expect me to turn up. I'm starting to think like an outlaw, kid. Cattle sale of the year. Junction City auction yards. Friday the 27th. That's next Friday. That bank. We found the baker's wife. You and me. Can't take it. Get us another beer, Ben. Wanna do some more thinking? Oh, sorry. Get us another drink. Comanche. Hey, boy, me and my friends were just wondering about that. You planning on drawing down on squirrel or duck? <laughs> <laughs> that man in the black coat, that jumped he calls. Colts? A gunfighter from up north? What's the matter, boy? You think you can see a squirrel? Gentlemen, this is Mr. Comanche Doyle. He's a bit uh, sad folks around here don't pay him, no, never mind. You're doing a lot of flapping off at the mouth, mister. Buying into this? You can let that big mouth of yours just go on flapping. You're right, sir. This is none of my business. My big mouth is shut tight. I was just about to leave. Good idea. You just stick your tail between your legs and slink out of here like a yellow dog. Here, try mine. Get. Can't take on four guns, kid. Now then, Mr. Comanche. You got two choices. Either you pull that squirrel gun of yours, or I pull it for you. 
maybe stick it up your squirrel ass. <laughs> So good, I scare myself. You boys are lucky. They have Comanche drawn down on you. Ben? Hold it right there, mister. You blink an eye, I'll cut you in half. Good night, Matthew. Good night, Jeff. <clears throat> sure. Appears there was another drifter involved, but he's could have passed. Nobody in town ever seen any of them before. But one of the boys said he had the name Comanche Doyle. <laughs> that be you, Mr. Gunfighter? Comanche? Maybe a good pistol whipping to loosen up your tongue. Leave it be, Bart. It don't matter none what he calls himself. I'll telegraph his description around tomorrow. My guess is we'll know who he is by noon. Anybody that fast with a gun's got to be wanted for something. You know, men like you got to understand the old ways is finished. You can't outrun the wire. It's the 19th century. Check around outside, Dort. Make sure the boys have settled down for the night. It's been a long time, Jack. At least 10 years, Tom. Yeah. How have you been? Eh, yeah, surviving. Just surviving. You know, I can't let you just walk away with too many witnesses. By tomorrow, the whole county's gonna know about the shootout. Ten years ago, I'd have kicked this cell door down and rode out of town with you, but now... Nah, just do your job, Tom. We all gotta survive best way we can. But don't take it personal. I didn't put no name to the description. It's the best I can do, partner. Appreciate it. Well, it's quite outside, Sheriff. Well, you're deputized, Bart. Just don't get close to the drifter, and I'll spell you about sun up. You lock her up tight. Evening, Sheriff. There. You boys can act the fool all you want. I ain't opening up for nobody. Go home and sleep it off. Darren fool.
there. Looky here. No aims or sights. You sure got lucky in that ruckus, boy. Nah, you got lucky. Lucky I didn't blow a hole in that big turd you're using for a head. Feet, son of a bitch. Slowly, boy. One hand out front, the other on your head. Come closer. Back up. Now you can dunk down. <laughs> no point me missing a good night's sleep for a scum like you. You got religion, Ben? No, I never thought much on it myself. Till back there when you came through the flames, thought you was old Satan himself come to claim me personal. <laughs> I've come to think of it, Ben. You've got a shortcoming. You just ain't partial to pulling that trigger and blowing a man's head off, right? Don't be ashamed, Ben. Nobody's perfect. Even I got one flaw in my nature. Never could trust anyone. Till now. You being gun shy don't matter. Shit, I shoot better than any two men alive anyway. 
What counts is, I trust you, partner. I trust you like a brother. And that, it touches me. I feel like I should give you a big hug. So it's a lucky thing we don't do that kind of sissy stuff. Three dollar now, four really better, four dollar now, four, four now, five. Five dollar really better, five dollar now, six, six dollar now, seven. Seven dollar now, eight, 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 dollar eight dollar. Cattle sales finish at three o'clock. By five, that bank will be bursting up the seams with cash. Then we go in and pay our respects. Yeah, I know. That's what's going to give us the element of surprise. I'll show you. Beg your pardon, sir. That bank over there, is that the, where those outlaws were ambushed? It surely is, sir. You were right. Outlaws. Makes me nervous about depositing our cash there. Gentlemen, gentlemen, you are looking at the safest bank in the state. Why, every businessman in town is a member, and, and at, at the first hint of trouble, No outlaw in the territory would even think about it. Not after the way we handled that younger gang. You were part of that? That's first spot him. Yes, I, I just have an eye for trouble. That's uh, definitely the bank for us, sir. For sure. Oh, no. Good side is that he couldn't spot an outlaw if they took a dump in his hat. Bad side is he just proved it. No. Two riders. One on the left. That's J.D. Kincaid. One of the bank robbery four states. Maybe he didn't spot me. His gang must be in town somewhere. He wouldn't be dumb enough to try and take that bank with just two men. It's different. You better follow him. Careful, like. I'll meet you back at the stables. Six of them. One of them, a uh, guy with an eye patch, big fella. Dutch Spencer. That's the Kincaid gang. They're here after the bank. Should have known. Biggest cattle sale of the year. Town not expecting anything. Outlaw think. We got two choices. We go in now first. Take the bank right now. Worth taking the sales over. Second choice. We let Kincaid knock over the bank. We jump him on the way out of town. Which way out of town? I hate these big cities. What? Three. Third choice? We quit. Find another bank.
what's wrong? What, what is it? Outlaws. Bang. Oh. I got alert for members. Pete, you, you, you go get the marshal, and I'll, uh, I'll sound the alarm. Don't run. Step forward. Put your weapons on the ground. Lay them on the ground. This way. Hurry. Set it up right there. That's good. We like a shot of Marshal Kurtz capturing uh -huh. all the bank robbers. All righty. All right. Hold it. Wait for me at the horses. One more thing I gotta do. The gentlemen, just a little bit closer together, please. If you folks will move off just a little bit, thank you very much. Now, gentlemen, please, still his box. This one is for the big papers back east. They want to see the original committee. And, of course, our next governor. All right, gentlemen. Hold it. Buzzard's gonna stay in town. Oh, as long as they're being paid. They'll stay until they realize that Jack ain't never coming back. Never. But he promised Lana. Oh, right. A man don't have to keep his word to a whore. Someone should have told Lana that ten years ago. Maybe. She ain't gonna hear it today. Lana, why don't you come inside and share a nice cool lemonade with me? Oh, I'm just getting a breath of fresh air away from them. Jack's most likely waiting until things get a bit quieter here. Well, of course. I mean, he can't just ride up in broad daylight. 
They'd spot him a mile away. Honey, how many men have asked you to ride off with them, maybe even marry up with them? More than I can count. Well, start counting, darling. Or one day you're gonna be standing on some dusty porch waiting for a knight in shining armor that really ain't a knight at all, just some gritty old cow. Hey, Ben, relax. Marner will be all right. That's just a hick town, no sheriff. Besides, it's been two weeks and no one's looking for us. Yep. We did the perfect crime, kid. And no one will ever know about it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you get everything, honey? Any problems? Maybe. Ben, why don't you check my supplies, make sure I've packed them nice and tight. Newspaper got a letter with this bank manager's watch as proof. The letter says that you were the mastermind behind the robbery, and that you double-crossed the King K gang. They even pointed out your photograph. And Jack, the letter was signed Comanche. Read out that part underneath my likeness. Read it out loud. $10,000 reward for Mr. Lightning Jack Kane. Described by Marshal Kurtz as meaner than a rattlesnake and twice as cunning. Oh, Ben. Why? Nice. Twice as cannon. Ten thousand dollars. Oh, cannon! That's a it's an Indian ritual. Comanches, we better get rolling. Every lawman in the territory is going to be looking for me and Ben. Maybe, maybe every lawman in the country. Right. We're the Kane Gang, the outlaws. Jack, folks in town said this trail leads through hostile Apache country. Good. See this? It's a spirit bag. Bought it off an Apache medicine man. That makes me a full blood brother to the Apache. I'm practically family. It's only $50. Well, even if it works for you, what about me and Ben? No problem. See, this covers my whole family. I just tell them uh, you're my wife, and uh, Ben's our kid. <laughs> anyway, relax. I ain't an engine within a hundred miles of here. I can tell. <laughs> 